We're now going to look at an example of using upsampling and downsampling inside of a DSP system. So the system that we're going to consider here has an input X of T passing through a, an analog anti-aliasing filter, HA of omega. We're going to then sample at intervals of T. That gives a discrete time signal X of N, which will downsample by 3 to obtain X D of N. Then we'll pass that through a bandpass filter and take the output and upsample it by 2 to get Y U of N. So just showing what some of these filters are, we're going to assume that H A has this characteristic here that it's unity between 0 and omega p radians per second, which is 1500 pi in this example. And we'll assume that it goes to 0 by omega sub s, which is 3000 pi. And we'll assume that our sampling interval is 1 over 3000 seconds, or a sampling frequency of 3000 hertz. And then, of course, the downsampling operation is actually implemented by first passing the data through a low-pass filter, with cutoff pi over 3. We'll assume that's an ideal low-pass filter. Then we're going to take the output of that and discard samples. So we're going to keep every third sample and throw away the ones in between to get xd of n, which is equivalent to the output of the low-pass filter evaluated at arguments 3n. Then our bandpass filter we'll assume has a pass band from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4 radians. And then on the upsampling side, remember that to upsample, we first insert zero values. And since we're upsampling by a factor of two, we're going to insert a zero in between every existing sample of y of n. And then we pass that through a low pass filter with cutoff pi over two and a gain of two. So in this case, we're going to assume that our input signal has a spectrum shown here. I have a peak at 500 pi, this triangle shape. And then we'll assume things are flat from 1000 pi on up. And what we're going to do is find the discrete time Fourier transform and the Fourier transform representations for x of n, xd of n, y of n, and yu of n. So we'll begin with the sampling operation. First, we pass our input signal, which has this Fourier transform x of omega, through this low pass filter and then sample. When we do that, of course, passing it through the low-pass filter, we just multiply the input spectrum by the frequency response of the filter. And so that gives us something that looks like I've drawn here, where at 1500 pi, which is omega p, we start having this linear decrease in the spectrum till we get to 3000 pi. And then when we sample, we have our usual representation for the Fourier transform of the sampled signal. We'll call that xs of omega. And it's just 1 over t, the sum from k equals minus infinity infinity, of xa of omega minus k omega s. So we're going to shift xa of omega by multiples of omega sub s. And since t is 1 over 3,000, omega sub s ends up being 6,000 pi radians per second. Now, once we have the Fourier transform for the sampled signal, we can convert that to a discrete time Fourier transform, x of e to the j omega, by taking xs of omega and replacing omega, uppercase omega, by lowercase omega divided by t, the sampling frequency. And this always takes the sampling frequency omega sub s and maps it to 2 pi, which of course maps the Nyquist frequency, in this case 3000 pi, down to pi in terms of lowercase omega. So I've only shown one period here of x of e to the j omega, and we've got amplitude 3000, and this shape which spans from minus pi to pi. So what, now in the next step, we're going to take x of n and downsample that by a factor of 3. So the downsampling operation involves low-pass filtering with cutoff pi over 3. We'll assume an ideal low-pass filter, and then we discard samples. So we start with this signal x of e to the j omega that we derived in the previous slide. If we pass that through an ideal low-pass filter with cutoff pi over 3, we're going to eliminate all of the frequency components that are greater than pi over 3. And that leaves us with the discrete time Fourier transform that I've shown in this particular drawing. Well, next, 
we will discard samples. And the operation of discarding samples is much like when we sample a signal originally. We get shifted replicates with 1 over 3 in this case because we're dis downsampling by a factor of 3. And each of these shifted replicates is scaled by the factor 3 that we're downsampling by. So in this case, we're going to take this XL of e to the j omega, we're going to scale it by a factor of 3, the axis. So what was at pi over 3 now goes out to th pi. We're going to divide by a factor of 3, so the amplitude of 3,000 now becomes 1,000. And then because this repeats, we end up filling in and this signal, of course, xd of e to the j omega is 2 pi periodic. So I've shown mostly one period here with indications that there's another period on each side. Now we could convert that to a Fourier transform, again using the mapping that lowercase omega is equal to capital omega times the sampling interval. And since we've downsampled by a factor of 3, I'm assuming that the sampling interval now, instead of being 1 over 3,000, is 1 over 1,000. And our Fourier transform would look like I've drawn down here. The What happens at pi gets mapped to the Nyquist frequency, which in this case is 1,000 pi, since omega s prime, the sampling frequency associated with t prime, is going to be 2,000 pi. Now in the next step, we're going to pass this downsampled signal through a bandpass filter, which I've sketched here. So if this incoming downsampled signal with discrete time Fourier transform x d of e to the j omega, and the output then is just the product of the frequency response of the bandpass filter times the input spectrum. And so that's going to wipe out everything that's not between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So it's the only region we have signal content left. So we get this picture that I've depicted here. We've zeroed out in this interval and then above 3 pi over 4. And I can again use the sampling interval t prime to convert this to a Fourier transform by scaling the frequency axis according to lowercase omega is equal to capital omega times t prime. And this maps, just as we had in the previous slide, the Nyquist frequency of 1000 pi in capital omega is corresponds to pi in lowercase omega. So we've got from 250 pi to 750 pi is where this signal occupies in terms of radians per second. Well, our final step is to upsample the output of the low-pass filter by a factor of 2. And we accomplish that by first inserting a zero sample in between every existing sample of y of n. And then we pass that signal through a low-pass filter with cutoff pi over 2 and a gain of 2. So this is our incoming signal spectrum. When I insert zero samples, this scales the frequency axis by a factor of 2. So everything gets compressed by 2. So what I had here in the input centered at pi over 2 now becomes centered at pi over 4. And recall that y is 2 pi periodic. So I also had one of these shapes centered on 3 pi over 2. And when I bring that down, it'll show up at 3 pi over 4. So once we do the scaling of the axis, what was 2 pi periodic now becomes pi periodic. And that gets taken care of by the low-pass filter. So I've sketched out the low-pass filter involved in the uplet sampling operation. We have a gain of 2, and our pass band is minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And that wipes out these terms at 3 pi over 4 and minus 3 pi over 4. And we get, finally, the discrete time Fourier transform of the output is just shown as shown here. Now we can again convert this to a Fourier transform. And we'll assume that this upsampling operation affects the underlying sampling interval. So before we started, we had a sampling interval of 1 over 1,000. Since we've upsampled by 2, we'll assume that's gone to 1 over 2,000. And again, what happened at pi in lowercase omega gets mapped to the Nyquist frequency, which in this case is going to be 2,000 pi. 
And so pi over 4 corresponds to 500 pi, one-fourth of that. So it's very straightforward. We just have to be careful about mapping our axes and being systematic and proceeding through this sequence of steps to find the spectra of the signals at each stage.